Hello everyone, welcome to our solution for the column design question in our uh, course module. Uh, so, a heads up, this question, so this question solution will be quite uh, long, so you need to fully concentrate or just try to watch it, the solution uh, in separate parts. Okay, uh, saying that, uh, let's go over the briefly what the question uh, is and let's develop a solution methodology for it. So, first of all, the column design that we're going to do, uh, it's, it is a braced frame, so you should be familiar with the concept of brace or unbraced frames from the course modules that we have covered in the column design section. The interior column dimensions are given as 500 millimeters by 500 millimeters and the length of the columns are 6 mm and they are in single curvature. The beams are flanged with the dimensions of 250 by 500 and the length is 5 meters. We are using C20 and S420 steels. ND is given us 2500 kN and NGD is given us 1800 kN. The first design moment is 200 meters and the second design moment is 250 kN meters. The question is to find the required reinforcement. Okay, let's go over the solution step by step. So as the first step, first step, let's work on, start working on the columns and just try to understand their uh, mechanical properties. So columns. So for the columns, they are given as given as as a rectangular section. So we can calculate the radius of gyration, which is nominated by I with the following simplified formula 0 0.3 times the height since we know the height is 500 millimeters we just multiply 0 0.3 by 500 and we get 150 millimeters as a radius of gyration radius of gyration so for the moment of inertia for rectangular section we can use the height to the 4 divided by 12. This is the moment of inertia formula. If you are unfamiliar with this uh, moment of inertia radius of gyration uh, equations, uh, just briefly go over your strength of materials course notes. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, H in that case is again 500 millimeters. It is raised to the 4 and divided by 12. And when we do the chem computation, we get 5.21, 10 to the 9 millimeter to the 4, fourth power. So, since we know the length of the internal columns was 6 meter, which is equal to, which equals to 6,000 millimeter, we can get the I over L ratio as 5.21 10 to the 9 millimeter to the 4 and L is 6000 millimeter and the result will be 0 0.87 10 to the 6 millimeter cubed. Okay. Uh, since we have finished the columns, let's move on to the beams and let's try to do the same for the beams and for the beams we are considering the correct section consider correct section to get their um, moment of inertia okay so I'm expressing the correct moment of inertia as I correct which can be computed as BW times B cubed over 12 and in that case our BW is 250 and D is 500 they're all in millimeters as you know so BW was 250 D was 500 raised to the 
third power divided by 12, we get 2.6, 10 to the 9 millimeter to the fourth power. And since we also know that the length of the beams are 5 meter, length is equal to 5 meter, so I over L becomes 2.6, 10 to the 9 millimeter to the fourth divided by 5,000 millimeters, which yields as the result of 0.52. 10 to the 6 millimeter cubed. Okay, so we got the I over L ratio both for the beams and the columns. And let's draw a simplified, a simplified figure for the beams and the columns, okay? So, this is basically our structure right now. And these two are actually the two columns and this is the two beams that we are considering and we want to get the alpha value in here to understand if we need to account for second order moments as this is one of the most key concepts in the column design. So. As you know from our lecture notes, the alpha, the alpha value is equal to from is equal to each other from the both sides, and is equal to the ratio between the summation of the I over, I over L ratio of the columns.